Porsche, the badge is synonymous with performance, even when you're talking about a two-ton SUV. For this is the new KN Turbo, and it's more powerful, more agile, more efficient, and quite simply, more mind-boggling than ever before. Here's some stats for you. 4.8 litres, two turbos, 500 horsepower, and 0 to 62, 4.7 seconds. As for top speed, well, that's 173 miles an hour. Not bad for something that's as aerodynamic as a hippo. And then there's the handling. A big SUV really has no right to be able to go around corners quite like this. Part of the reason for this improved agility is down to the fact that KN Turbo is 180 kilograms lighter than before. But the best bit is that its all new four wheel drive system is now able to send all of its power to the rear wheels. So if you like, you can do things like this. Downsides? Well, there is one. The Porsche Cayenne Turbo costs £82,000. I mean, obviously, you're paying a premium for all that performance. But you've got to ask yourself, do you really need it? After all, how often are you going to be driving your SUV on a track? Maybe this is a more suitable environment for an off-roader. And maybe for most people, this is the more suitable KN, the normally aspirated V8 model. It costs a far more reasonable £54,000. And while it's 100 horsepower down on the turbo, it's still almost as fast as a Boxster, yet is 23% more economical than the previous KNS. This new car still has a traditional automatic gearbox rather than a dual clutch PDK system. That's because a torque converter is actually better for if you're going off road. But I'm going to it's old fashioned because it's actually got eight speeds. The new transmission has a very low first gear, which does away with the need for a separate low ratio box. And this, plus a lockable centre diff, and hill descent control mean the KNS has impressive off-road ability. OK, so it's probably not quite as capable as a Land Rover, but it's more than rugged enough to traverse your country estate, or, if you're a shake, blast you over some sand dunes. Just how many people take their off-roaders actually off-roading? Well, in the case of the KN, it's apparently less than 7%, although I don't really blame them. In reality, this is where you're most likely to find an SUV, in the city. And this is the KN that's best suited to the urban jungle. If you're wondering why it doesn't make a noise, that's because it's the all-new hybrid version. It can do up to 40 miles an hour on electric power alone, but when your batteries start to run out or you need a little bit more oomph, the supercharged V6 under the bonnet kicks in seamlessly, and away you go. Combined, the motor and engine produce 380 horsepower, which means similar performance to the V8, only with 20% lower emissions. In fact, this COS rating of 193 grams per kilometre of CO2 is the lowest of the entire Porsche range. Porsche claims the KNS hybrid will do 34.4 mpg, but I've never really been one to trust claimed economy figures for hybrids. So before I started this test drive, I decided to reset the car's trip computer. So I'm going to pull over to find out what the figures are really saying. Now, just cycle through these menus, looking at the trick computer, and it's saying I did bang on 34 mpg, which is almost identical to what Porsche claimed this car would do. 
And if I'm honest, I was very, very careful with my throttle pedal, and I don't think I could drive like that every day. And of course, I am relying on Porsche's trip computer, but really, that shouldn't take anything away from this car's ability. So then, is the hybrid worth the extra £4,000 it costs over the normal KNS? Yes, if you do a lot of town driving, and especially if you regularly go into London's congestion charge zone. But whichever KN you choose, there is one thing they all have in common. A fabulous interior. The design has clearly been influenced by the Panamera. Also, the materials are of a much higher quality than those in the old car. It's more roomy too, yet this time round the SUV actually feels genuinely sporty inside, just like a proper Porsche should. But it's not this, nor the improved performance, handling, nor efficiency which stand out most. It's the fact that at long last, the KN, it's no longer ugly.